Rockport Technologies began because I really wanted to explore what was possible in building loudspeakers if there were no constraints on design, manufacturing processes, or execution, or materials technology. I never wanted Rockport Technologies to be a big industrial concern. I've always wanted it to be, instead, uh, a very comfortable place to work that would inspire me and where the creative design process uh, was really fostered by the surroundings. For me, there's no greater place to do that than on the coast of Maine. So Andy Pay and I have been friends for a long time. His company has always really appealed to me. The way he does business, the way he structured the company, but primarily the fact that with his turntables and later with his speakers, he's essentially pursued the best way that he could come up with, really without regard to how much it would cost or how complicated it would be to build that way. And he's always made products that he's 100% invested in and really believes in. Everything about Rockport Technologies was really perfect for me. At one point we realized, wait a minute, I could purchase Rockport Technologies and you and I could work together and I could provide a longer term future for the company and that's in fact what happened. And Andy and I are now working together as partners. I see Rockport Technologies staying very similar to the company it's always been in that we're going to continue to pursue the best possible technologies, construction techniques, materials, if it gets us closer to our goal. Rockport Technologies is structured in a way that we're not beholden to any particular material or technique or construction process. So when we see a new way to do something or a new technology becomes available, we can pursue that. We're gonna remain an agile company that can go in those different directions. Currently, our product line consists of four loudspeakers. We have the Atria 2 loudspeaker, the Avior 2 loudspeaker, the Cygnus, and then our flagship model with the Lyra. The Atria 2 is a floor standing three way utilizing a nine inch bass driver, six inch mid range, and a one inch waveguide mounted beryllium tweeter. It uses a full constrained mode damped MDF enclosure. It's got a four inch thick baffle, and the side panels are variable section thickness constrained layer damped panels as well. The Avery 2 is also a floor standing three-way, but it uses two nine-inch base drivers and it has a six-inch mid-range and the one-inch beryllium tweeter, also waveguide mounted. What really makes the Avior 2 different is not just the base extension though, uh, because it has greater sensitivity, we were able to do different things with the motor circuit for the mid-range driver as well. The Avior 2 cabinets construction is even more ambitious than the Atria 2. It's got a six inch thick baffle, it's got considerably more bracing, and thicker side panels as well, and of course more enclosure volume. The Cygnus is a floor standing three-way also, but this time we're using 10 inch base drivers with three inch motor circuits. Uh, the other thing about the Cygnus that's really unusual is that it has a constrained layer damped aluminum sub baffle, which is both bolted and bonded to the main enclosure. The aluminum sub baffle allows the Cygnus to have even greater dynamic expression, better low level resolution, and a lower noise floor. The Lyra is a completely different loudspeaker than the rest of our line. It utilizes very similar drivers as the Cygnus, but the enclosure is far more ambitious. The Lyra's enclosure uses an inner and outer shell of cast aluminum, which are also post-machined, that capture a very high hysteresis viscoelastic core material. The core material bonds the inner and the outer shell together, so the inner and the outer shells do not act independently, the whole thing acts as a system. The result of that is that the Lyra's enclosure has far less contribution to the sound than any enclosure on any loudspeaker available. For all these years, Andy has worked to correlate the theoretical engineering and scientific side and the measurement side with the microphone and electrical measurements to what we actually hear in a music room. What we do that's different from other loudspeaker manufacturers is that we optimize every single crossover for the set of drivers that's being used with. Even the very best mid-ranges and tweeters are gonna have a slightly different response from each other. And that means that you can't use the same exact crossover on every set of drivers if you really wanna optimize the design. These are very small changes that are really difficult to see in the measurement but very easy to hear. By definition, a truly excellent loudspeaker design also has to be balanced because the design will never be better 
than its single weakest element. And I think that's what separates Rockport Technologies designs from many others, is that we are uh, very aware of so many of the different aspects of loudspeaker design, uh, be it material science or mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, acoustic design, transducer design, filter design, all of these things weigh in. I hope that when we get together in 2040 and we talk about Rockport Technologies, you're gonna say, wow, you know, Rockport was using that technology in 2020 and I'm just starting to see it in other products in the market today in 2040. What we wanna do is use the most advanced technologies to design and build our loudspeakers, making sure that we never lose focus and that the, uh, the ultimate result is using this technology in the service of music.